Hello, lurkers. And hello, all you archaeologists. I'm the Drumstruct, and I'm having an AI. Well, I, I guess. The Somnium Files. Turn the sound down. I'm going to do the introduction again, I think. Hello, lurkers, and hello, all you archaeologists. I'm the John Strutt, and I'm having an AI, the Somnium Files adventure. Or is it I? I'm going to load my game. Um, I was cheated, wasn't I? I was cheated. And I won't stand for it. Why is there like five minutes between the autosave and that? Hmm. Did I not save? We shall see. So, because I was cheated, I'm just going to follow the guide until we get to where I was. My thoughts are still the same from last time. But I'm sure I'll cover them again if I get a spare moment. I'm just gonna fast forward all through all this. Yeah, so I Give me a brief second. I'm just gonna make sure. I'm, I'm just. Yes, I thought that might be the case. I don't want to accidentally cover the screen with other stuff. Where did I put the answers? All that. Uh. Well, I literally just got it up. Beg your pardon. Uh, there it is. Um, right. Actually, you know what? That works for out for the best. Cut this bit out, John. Oh, hello. What are we doing? Yes. And I need this. Cool. Well, let's make this really small for a brief second. Right, that'll do. Um. Right, yes. Uh, so I did all this before, didn't I? So, um... This time I'm gonna... I, I literally got right to the end and then I ran out of time. And then it made me start from the beginning. Uh, which uh, made me feel a little bit grumpy. Let me tell you. Uh, so I, I can probably remember a lot of it. But we will... Arrested. Like we know to break... Uh, break lock with pick, yes. Uh, I mean, that wastes loads of time. However, break the lock with that. Roger. And somebody's somebody's done a murder. Oh, that's not very nice of them, is it? Bet she didn't appreciate that at all. There's some keys. So we have the times ten. It says so. Agent Date, you've got five minutes. It says to open door A. Is that door A? That's door B. Where's door A? Okay. A door that looks like. So yeah, okay, fair enough. That gets rid of our times ten. Pick up key one. Don't worry, like I've already solved this, that's why I'm following the uh guide. The ice pick is next. I just didn't want to do it again. Open door A again. Agent Date, you've got four minutes. A door that looks like 
Perhaps we can use the key. It open. Ah, isn't this the? Then we open door B. I figure out where it is. There it is. A door with it does not appear to be. Then open door C. door E is, but I guess I'll find it. It doesn't feel like I'm doing it faster, does it? I'm a little bit worried about that. There's door E. It's probably to get rid of the times five, though. That's 50 seconds, are you sure? Push the steel drum. You have three minutes, Dante. An oil drum hung. Open door two. A rusted. That goes without saying we want to only want to spend one second doing that. Oh, it's a bloody murder! Somebody's doing a bloody murder! Oh! What a rascal! Pick up key 8 o'clock. It's a key with a watch beside it. The hands indicate. Okay. Uh, open door D. I feel like this is less time than we usually have. Open. I... Okay. Uh, kick the pipe. Door three. A rusted metal. We don't get to see this murder, which is kind of interesting. Also, that writing was backwards. This key has control panel. Control. Panel. Best to get. Yeah. Okay. Of okay, investigate. Okay. Of okay, insert key. Rows of monitors and buttons. Rotate key. Rows of monitor. Press switch. Rows of monitor. Rotate key. Open door D. <laughs> 
Okay. Oh, hello, screams. Door D prime. Uh, I will use this to make it only three seconds. Okay. Uh, uh, right now, because I, I, I did this entire section and I lost right at the last minute and then it made me restart it, so I'm just following a guide today until I get to the end. Uh, okay, so I open D. Uh, then I open door C. Where's door C? That's door C, okay. Why is this door C? Okay. Door C prime. Shit, I'm, I've run out of time again. It's really annoying. Uh. Then B. Door B. Then kick open door F. Nah, I've run out of time. Assuming that's door F. Okay. Kick open door F. Gonna have to tackle the ladder. An iron. Oh my word. Oh. No, because we need one second. No, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. We tackle this. Ready? But we still need to open the door. Oh, you know, I'll watch this. So we've got like a second to walk to the door. Whoa. I've just got to hope he's fa she's facing the right direction. This Somnium is awfully dangerous. Then I open door four. Hey, that door. No, 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 not the power cord. Not the power cord. Oh my word, I had a second left. We've done it with a second to spare. Okay. Um, okay, I just need to make sure this is on properly. Cool. We put the guide away. So, we saw on video the boss killed so Sojima and everyone and now the characters think that so is that a boss is the killer but I think somebody has swapped brains with boss was you here for my theory that's Iba return to the control room on the third floor at once Oh, I should. I might want to. Oh. Yeah, I know how this works. Okay. I don't think I can pause right now. 
What the hell is going on? No, I can't pause, unfortunately. That's a cool reveal because I didn't think it'd be quite that, but I'll tell you what I thought it was if it gives me, if it gives me the chance to pause. Because it's quite a big explanation. Tate, what are you doing? Six minutes are up. Wait, wait, Hitomi is... Tate, you can't go any longer. Force shut down. No. Yeah, if it, if it gives me the chance to... Yes, so I'll explain... I'll explain what's going on. L and luckily, on the VOD... I do say the theory what already, so you can tell I'm not lying, as if I would lie. Uh, but, um... I didn't think it would show four different people. That's reasonably clever. But I think I know who it is. My, my theory hasn't changed with that new information. But I'll say it with and without the new information. If it gives me the chance to save and pause and stuff like that. Because I need them to not blur out the answer while I'm talking about my theory. Um... Okay. 314. Just. I took a look around your head. Okay, cool. We're gonna save our game. The quick answer is that is not boss. Ooh. Uh. Okay, that's fixable. I think this is a little bit loud. Let's turn that down. Uh, how about now? One, two, one, two. So I'm just sort of naturally hitting it. I'm going to turn that up a little bit as well. How's the audio? Right. So we'll say this, we'll, we'll simply go through the story so far, right? With this flow chart. So, this is, um, oh, I just, we'll go, we'll make sure we know all the characters. So this is Date, of course. This is the police officer. Still a little loud. Okay, I can actually turn myself slightly down here. That's interesting. Let's turn it, okay. Hmm. Right, this is the main character, this is Date. Uh, he, important information is he he only has one eye uh, and he has amnesia um, and so he doesn't remember before the amnesia right and they made him a police officer he's got a magical robot eye uh, this is the magical robot eye for some reason it's a a bear and a girl but also it's a eye ball she's called an eyeball uh, this is Iris uh, she crops up quite a lot in the cases um, well, okay, no, no, let's establish relationships. So, Mizuki is, so Shoko is the first dead body we find, and we at the scene of the crime, we found Mizuki. Mizuki is her daughter, but Mizuki is also living with Date uh, as a roommate, because we've essentially adopted her. Um, Mizuki has two friends. Uh, which is um, Iris, who is like a famous internet personality, sort of, uh, and Ota. Ooh, still peeking. That's really weird. Um, let's turn this right down. Right. One, two, one, two. I'll turn it down there as well. That's interesting. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um... Right, so we have Ota, he's a nerd. Uh, there's Ota's mum, and we're Ota's dad. Uh, the Im other important thing is that their business is failing because they live too close to the park. The park is where we found the dead body, but that entire area is off limits because of an uh, industrial accident a while back. This is So Sejima. He's a he's a politician who made loads of money by selling and buying real estate uh, in that area. I can't remember the initial connections. This is our boss, 
She's she's apparently 42. Um, this is the, the guy who invented all the tech, basically. Um, and he's another police person. This is our informant, Mama. Uh, this is Moma. He is um, the current leader of uh, uh, Yakuza Gang. Uh, so we know the reason we found So Sejima is because one is phone. There's a phone call on the scene of the crime uh, that connects us to, to him. Uh, but also he was seen at the mob, and the mob has a connection to um, Renju and Shoko. Uh, Renju is the husband of. Uh, well, father of Mizuki and husband of Shoko. So I'm going through this very fast. Uh, Hitomi is the mother of Iris. But we did discover that Hitomi and Renju uh, knew each other growing up. Also, Renju runs a talent agency and that's his connection with Iris as well. Uh, Manaka. Uh, we'll get to Manica. We'll hide Manica for something. 89 is a mysterious assassin who uh, did the original serial killings. Uh, we'll, we'll explain that later. That's So's bodyguard. Here are some Yakuza. They're not important. He is a nurse. That might be secretly important. Who knows? Uh, he's a receptionist who I don't think is important at all. No, uh, she's from a maid cafe. Uh, I'm pretty sure they just put a creepy guy in to just be creepy. And of course, to our friendly inspector who I've thought was incredibly suspicious for the entire game. We'll get to him. Uh, spoiler warning, I think it's him. Uh, okay, give me a... Designs. Right. So we've established the characters. Most of them, anyway. Uh, we're going to go into the flowchart. We're going to learn what I know. And it's going to give us context. Uh, right, so there was... A murder scene. Uh, she's had her eye taken out. So uh, this is a new Cyclops killer. Turns out there was an original Cyclops killer. Let's say about a decade ago. At least. Um, b b probably. Be uh, yeah let's say 10 years ago. Uh, we can go into people's brains. Even though. Uh, you know that would be. Like a crime wouldn't it. Uh, going into, without their permission. But whatever. Uh, we meet Iris's um, uh, mother. Why, why were we talking to her? It doesn't really matter. Like, everyone's con connected in the way I explained. We go... Uh, we think Iris is suspicious. So we, we jump into her brain. Turns out Iris knows some things. Although we may have just figured out why Iris knows some things. Let's zoom out. Uh, so let's... Hmm, what order should I do this in? We'll do red, yellow, pink, purple, green. Right. Uh, what's this? Oh, uh, no, this is inside Mizuki. Yes, because she was mute at the scene. So, uh, this is if we get her voice back, this is if we don't. Uh, we get suspicious of Iris. Uh, we check inside her brain, and she's seen some very strange stuff. Uh, very suspicious. Uh, then we check on Ota. Uh, oh, yes. And then Iris and Ota... They get murdered, I think. Let me just zoom out, just in case. No, 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 no. Which way do they get murdered? Yes! I believe they get murdered here. We don't actually want to do red. It's, red is like the last one we want to do. Nope, I got that confused. Hmm. Anyway. In one timeline, yeah, yeah, basically, at a certain point, uh, I, uh, Ota bops us on the head, and we get knocked out, and we wake up, 
and Iris and Ota are involved in a very elaborate murder scene. In one timeline, they get away. In one timeline, they don't. So if we continue down red, uh, in this timeline, uh, they get away. Ota saves them. Uh, and we, we, we basically learn about Ota's family in this timeline. Uh, she, she's got a condition. Uh, she's not the murderer, thankfully. She's got nothing to do with the murderer. She thought Ota was the murderer and was protecting him. Uh, and it's all very sad. It's actually quite... This is very nice scene. Um, Ota promises to be a better person. Uh, and uh, Ota's a hero. That's how that ends. Um, if we go the other way... They both die. Uh, this is where we learn that Hitomi had a, uh, a uh, she's, she's, her arm's not working. And we find out that that's because uh, the mob, um, basically, there, there was this police officer uh, and he eventually became an, a, uh, a vigilante and started solving crimes on his own against the law because he was a vigilante. But then he got caught up in mob business and had to do murders for the mob. So it turns out, if I leave here, look at Rohan, the original Cyclops killer, uh, well, was technically speaking, this guy called 89, because he killed all those people, but he's not really, the actual Cyclops killer is Rohan, because uh, Rohan plucks the eyes out of people, um, but he makes the assassin kill them first. So he was just killing a bunch of people, and he didn't understand why he was doing it. He was just told to do it. Uh, anyway. Uh, 89 fell in love with Hitomi. Uh, and refused to do any more murders. Uh, and that's why he got put in prison. Uh, we see Boss in that scene. So clearly, like, Boss is covering up for 89. Um, we don't know his actual name. So we know that. Let's c carry on. Uh... So if we go down this way, so they're both dead. Um, oh, yes. And this is where the game locked me out. The, this is the scene where it shows Boss murdering So Sejima. And she very clearly goes, look, look at me. I'm doing a murder. Like you can see her doing that. Uh, and it goes, no, go somewhere else. So we go somewhere else. We go d down a different timeline. Uh, instead, we, we rescue him in a slightly different way. Um, okay, so in this ending, So Sejima, for some reason, decides to kidnap Bazuki for reasons that I don't understand. Uh, we go on a big shootout, uh, and we we become one happy family. Uh, they they uh, we, we find out that Mizuki's parents were basically basically both horrible. Uh, her father ignored her because uh, he was too hard working for work, uh, and her mother was just. Just not a terrible, terrible person, to be honest. Um, but, like, they're now a family. And it's a, a nice, again, nice, lovely ending that has nothing to do with who actually did the murders. But in this ending, So Sejima is blamed for the murders. And it's like, well, it's obviously not him. Uh, and Okay, so what happens if we go down this timeline? Um, we, be we become friends of Iris, which is a bit weird. Um, we investigate So Sejima. Uh, and we, we, we look into So Sejima's head and we see him murdering... Oh, yes, that's it. Sorry. In somebody's brain, we see the dead body of Iris. Uh, I think it might... We're not sure whose brain it was. Oh, it was Mizuki's brain, of course. And he's scared. He thinks she's dead. It's just, like, it's a prediction. Um, and he goes to see her and she's perfectly alive. Uh, and then he scans his head because he thinks he's the murderer and he, he sees in his dream that he killed her but like and he saves her in the dream so like the plot game's like ah can can you change the timeline is there parallel universes because she's clearly not dead um then some mobsters some some mysterious people try and kidnap her so it turns out uh she thinks there's a grand conspiracy going on. The game throws about 20 conspiracies at us. Uh, and you can either believe her or not believe her. So let's say you don't believe her. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Let's say you don't believe her. Uh, she'll run away. Uh, <laughs> everyone gangs up to rescue her. Uh, from so, so it turns out, yes, this, so, so much has happened. So much happened. So it turns out we're going to leave this for a tiny bit. Uh, it turns out. Um, so in one timeline, Renju died, by the way. Uh, on the left, Renju's dead. On the right, Renju is alive. But it turns out, um, Renju... So on the right timeline, 89 actually escapes prison. It turns out Pewter helped him escape. Because Pewter has a relationship with Renju. Uh, we don't actually know why the game is not revealed to the exact nature. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're a couple. But, uh, but like... Uh, this is where I can... We, we know... We know that um, 89 is essentially Iris's uncle. Because uh, it was one of the twists. Which means 89 and Renju definitely have Iris's best interests at heart. So, but they tried to kidnap her. Um, for good reasons. It was a good kidnapping, but we didn't know that at the time. Uh, anyway. Back into the flowchart. Where are we? So yeah, she gets kidnapped by Renju in 89. We rescue... Uh, and a bunch of thugs that they somehow hired. Um, we found out that she's dying. Uh, she only has... Iris has only have a, had a year to live. Uh, she's got a tumour. Uh, and so we dive into her brain with the idea that if we save her in the dream, we can save her in real life. Uh, that doesn't work. So in this timeline, it's like just like a sad ending, basically. This might be the Believe Her ending I come. The alternative... Okay, no. Sorry, that's the timeline where we believe her. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> if we don't believe her, she disappears. And we never find her. But the, there's this dead body at some point that we found that looks just like her that went missing. Somewhere up here, actually. I just missed it because there's so much that goes on. Um... And so it turns out... Yeah, there's 89 there. Oh, oh, that's locked. That timeline's locked. This is the good ending, I'm pretty sure. Right. So it turns out... There's... This woman called Manica. Uh, and any time anyone's ever seen a dead body of Iris, it's actually Manica. She's been frozen... For... Um... 18 years. Uh, Manaka went to school with uh, with Hitomi and Renju. Uh, and Manaka uh, was in a relationship with So Shijima. Uh, and So was going to pay her to get rid of the baby, which is obviously Iris. Iris. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, Renju and Hitomi kept Manaka frozen. Uh, at a certain point in one of the timelines, Hitomi uh, tried to bribe So Sejima so she could pay for nano machines to save Iris's life. So um, Renju and uh, Hitomi has kept Manaka's body. At a certain point, Mizuki actually saw the dead body, which is why she dreamt of it. Uh, no, well, their mother and daughter. Uh, Hitomi's been secretly raising Iris, but she she was born to Manaka. Uh, but Manaka was not was murdered, not by Sajima's so. <coughs> and this is important, but by his twelve year old son at the time. Now, Iris was literally just born. She's eighteen. So, by now, his 12-year-old son would be 30 years old. And the game is going to try and convince us that Kaname Date is the son of Sejima and that his amnesia was because of that. But, I'm on to you, game. This guy's 30 as well. 
and he's been around the entire game, and I know it's you. I think it's this guy. We're almost done, don't worry. Uh, but that's my main theory. I, I thought it was that guy all along, but in one of the timelines, Boss and Pewter reveal that the reason why you can only go into the brain dream machine for six minutes is if you spend any more time in there, a brain swap happens. Because your brain is in their brain, and if you stay there too long, their brain will escape into your body, and you'll switch bodies. So I think the reason 89 and Renju were kidnapped Iris is because they knew she was dying and wanted to switch her with a different person. I think that's why So Sejima, because now we know Iris is his daughter as well, um, So Sejima probably wants Iris to live as well, which means he was willing to kidnap Mizuki to switch bodies. So, like, a bunch of men are doing weird kidnappings to actually try and keep her alive. Um, and so in this timeline here, I believe it is, that's where we learn about the Hitomi. Like, this is where, like, they, they dug up the body. Yeah, if, they, if they've got a terminal illness and you brain swap them, <coughs> you murder a person and you save someone new. So this is where we look. It's locked. So in this timeline, a load of people aren't dead. So what it is, if I get my cursor out now, this timeline is the goodies still survive, the goodies. And this timeline we're on right now is the villain getting away with it. So what's just been solved is we went uh, after this. After we find out about Manica, this finally unlocked. It's been locked for about 20 hours. And, you, and like I, as I said, she, when she shoots Sejima in the head, she looks at the camera and goes, Look, I did a murder! Me! I'm the murderer! And you go into her brain. But what that just revealed, if I understand correctly, is that um, all the murders in the game were done by dif different people. So, because here's the thing, um, let's say you knock someone out, or you take someone while they're asleep, you can switch bodies with them, make sure they don't wake up, do a murder while wearing their skin, and then swap back, or, or you keep switching and you murder the person you just do, in fact, that's it, isn't it? So... Uh, so boss killed Iris, and Iris killed Renju, and Renju killed Shoko. If I understand it correctly, if I understand all the events, that. But I'm saying, I'm saying it's the inspector. It, it's the random inspector that turns up in some of the murder scenes is the actual killer. I don't know what's up with Shoko. There are still some secrets left. There's still... Oh, um... So Sejima had son has a name. So he's obviously going to be one of these two. But that doesn't mean he's not going to be revealed to someone else as well. But yeah, that's my theory. I think this guy did it. Let's continue. And I discovered something. Something about the new Cyclops serial killings. Apart from Ota, there are four victims. Shoko Nadami, Renju Okiura, Iris Sagan, and So Sejima. Who was responsible for these murders? Shoko was stabbed by Renju with an ice pick. Renju was strangled to death by Iris. 
What that's interesting is we actually took her to the police station for that. So cut open Iris's body. And like so would never do that. It like so's just discovered that Iris is Well he might not have he, he probably figured it out. But who shot so? It was you. In other words, all of these murders were committed by different people. There wasn't just one killer. No luck catching them clear killers then. That's how it looks on the surface, anyway. It's just the one killer, actually. But that's not the truth, is it? There's only one culprit, one person, and that person is the desk in the middle of the room. The mirror. Well, I had the theory already, that's why I named it. Alright. Well, yeah, it's you. Um, I don't think it's any of these four people. But it's technically you. Yes. You. The person in front of me right now. Who isn't necessarily boss. Probably not boss. You're blaming the commander of Abyss for this? No, not boss. The person inside boss's head. Can you at least try to make sense? So, one thing I didn't guess is that all of them were technically... I didn't know they were body hopping like that. I just assumed one person did... I, I thought boss... Like, there's no reason why boss couldn't have done all those killings. We literally established that earlier. All right, I'll explain. You know about the abandoned chemical plant in Kabasaki? Right. There's a prototype sink machine there. You use that device to swap around bodies one by one. In other words, the entire egg ends up being replaced. What's interesting is, I don't think Date knows this information. I'm pretty sure he's referencing something from a different timeline, which is a plot to a different game. Mind? Consciousness, memory, they are traded, switched. I don't know where it started, but at some point, you got into Shoko's brain. Oh, that's why Shoko was a monster. Then you got into Renju's and got rid of Shoko's body. Oh, so Ren yes, of course. So Renju would have been... That's when Mer Renju was actually murdered. Hmm, hang on. That, that means Renju definitely doesn't have Iris' best interest. Unless there's a different murderer on the other timeline. After Renju was Iris. You strangled Renju using Iris. After that, into So. Who you used to kill Iris and Ota at the cult storage warehouse. Yeah, and we already know it was so in the polar bear costume. Now, you're in Boss's body. Inside her head. I see. If you know that much, then I have nothing left to hide. I don't know, I'd... Yes. I am the culprit behind the new Cyclops serial killings. No, no serial killer. No, you don't have to give up because you can just say, no, that makes no sense. I'm in a police station. I'm clearly held under duress. And that man is insane. He's saying weird things with no proof. Like, you could have, you could have got away with it. I guess you can call me the new Cyclops Killer. That's good. Your, your name fits with the ones the police gave you. That's coincidental. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Who was inside the Iris during the interrogation Sunday? 
That was me. Hmm, interesting. You imitate her well. Ah, that's interesting, yes. So her dreams are the original Cyclops killings then? Well, that doesn't make any sense. From the way you talked in your body language, it was like the real Iris. Earlier too, it almost had me fooled. Your imitation of Boss was perfect. Yes, there's a reason for that. Let me define some terms first. A person's memory and sense of self. Let's call that personality. Can you imagine signing up to be the voice of this woman and being finding out like halfway through the script, oh, I get to be the baddie! <laughs> yes! It isn't quite the right word, but it'll suffice. I get to chew the scenery. Now, transferring that personality into someone else's brain, let's call that parasitism. The one transferring is the parasite. The one being transferred into is the host. So she's Parasitum Eve. Are you with me so far? Moving on. Even after the personality exchange is complete, the host's memory isn't completely lost. About 1% remains in the brain. So a parasite could use that. 1% to imitate the language and behavior of the host. That's how I knew about the warehouse and Sunfish Pocket, by the way. Thanks to Renju and Iris's remaining memories. Hmm. So I'm assuming Pewter and Eight and I got tricked because they didn't know it was a faker. Uh, give me the details of each one. Before I do, there's something I want to hear from you. How did you know about the prototype sync machine? Yeah, I don't actually know that because that's from a different timeline and we have not established that timelines can jump. Yeah, they're, they're, this, yeah, they're, yeah, they're doing something and I'm not really sure what they're doing. And not only that, you also seem to know what the sync machine is truly capable of. Why is that? That's... Regaining your memories, are you? Human memory is fractal. If you retain even a single piece of it, it's possible to recreate the whole thing. Citation needed. Pieces of memories are like roots that grow into every corner of the brain. I like the music going on. The music for when you find out about Malika is amazing. Because it's like the theme of the game, but with extra instruments in, it's really good. Gradually, slowly, taking its time. I imagine the same thing is happening in your brain right now. A fractal is a figure with self-similarity. I know what a fractal is, Iber. Allow me to explain. See this? Yeah, it's the Coke Curve and the Sapinski Triangle. Whichever fragment you cut, you will see a similar shape. The whole is made up of its similar parts. And of course, the mandel brot set. This is called a fractal figure. Memories in the brain are similar. That is what he is explaining. Yeah, but I don't think it's true. <laughs> he is claiming that from a few pieces, you can rebuild the memory. No, I, 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 I think memory is incredibly flawed and definitely not recoverable. Like, I... Every time you... What we do know is every time you recall a memory, you write over it. When you consider the memory, there's a chance you'll misremember. And then every time you do it, it, it reinforces the wrong memory. It's why people, uh, anytime somebody says about the, um, what's it called? Uh, the Berenstein Bears. That's not a mistake. That's a mistake you made tens of years ago. Uh, and you've just reinforced it by remembering it again and again and again. Every time you remember it, it's just, it's a, that's a new memory you're recording over it. There is no, like, crystal event story we're not computers
I knew about the prototype. I mean, obviously, this is a science fiction game, but whatever. <coughs> is that right? No, that's not it. Parallel worlds exist. Yeah. I did jump onto the parallel world theory, uh, theory because we literally have a series of parallel worlds going on. Who the hell are you? Saito. Saito Sejima. There we go. Hmm. Congressman Sejima's son. What? I researched Saito thoroughly, but I cannot find any images of him on the internet. He is listed on the family register, but I cannot find any photographs. Who's inside Iris during the interrogation center? I'm telling you. It was me. Just gonna leave it there for a bit. Hello, Heisen. Um, I'm gonna ignore the tone in which that was said. Uh, the plot of this game involves people switching minds. That's all I'm gonna say. It would take a while to explain, and I just, um, I just did a 20 minute explanation of the entire plot, so I'm not doing it again. Um, uh, this game requires a literal, <laughs> these are all the timelines. It would take, it took, it took, like it was literally 20 minutes I think of explaining, but yes. Anyway, we're just gonna, we're just gonna ignore, we're, we're just gonna enjoy the, the face acting for a little bit while I drink some tea. Right, I've indulged in the silly, starey face long enough. Why are you making me repeat myself? That means the somnium I entered on Sunday. That's right. It was me. Oh. How does he know about the original Cyclops killer? Because he was there for the original Cyclops killing, I guess. With Rohan. And something else was troubling me. Oh, yes. What's going on here? They did show my face there, yes. Or Tati's face. This is a murder mystery, sort of. Science fiction one. Yeah, it's a science fiction murder mystery game, but where one gimmick is that you step into people's dreams, uh, their, their mindscapes, but mindscapes are sort of unreliable, so you're gaining new information, but in weird ways. Fine. I still have time. Time? So I guess the implication is that we, we this Date has so. Sejima's body. Um, You'll see. So, where do you want me to start? So yeah, if if uh, I'm not, if you're interested in murder mysteries, Heisen, uh, and visual novels, then I, I guess I wouldn't recommend watching. <laughs> Shoko was killed on Friday. If we think of that as day one, and today is day five. Welcome back. What was Saito doing on those days? I decided to ask him. Day one, Friday. Like you guessed, my personality was in Shoko, Renju's ex-wife. That made calling Renju easy. I need to talk to you about something. He came over without question. I think it was around 4 p.m.? I had him meet me at the chemical plant. I made Renju go to sleep. Synced. Switched personalities. How did you make him go to sleep? And then stabbed Shoko's discarded body with an ice pick. I took Shoko to Bloom Park by car. Using the old abandoned subway line. Must have been around 
8 p.m. by the time I was finished. I tied up Shoko to one of the merry-go-round horses. There's a lie in this. Something's not quite right. After that, I used Renju's phone to send a Nile message to Mizuki. Mizuki got caught up in something serious. Then, I just waited for Mizuki to arrive. Day two. Until next Saturday evening, my personality was inside Renju. My next target was Iris. I knew she would be suspicious if I asked her to come to Kawasaki, so I asked her to come to Sunfish Pocket first. I called her a little before 5 p.m., and she arrived just after 6. I greeted her, then convinced her to come with me. That's when Ota saw us. Anyway, I put her in the car, then headed to the chemical plant. On the way, I made her take a sleeping pill. I knew she might run once she saw where we were going. It was around 7 p.m. when I got there, and I wasted no time switching bodies. I wouldn't work on me then, because I wouldn't have fallen asleep. After getting Iris's body, I used a rolled-up apron to strangle Renju to death. Then I put his body in an empty oil drum I'd prepared earlier. I put that in the trunk of the car, then headed to Sunfish Pocket. But then, something I didn't anticipate happened. Waiting for the signal in Akiva, someone knocked on the window of the car. It was Ota. He asked me something about being able to drive. He was surprised, to say the least. I didn't have time to waste on him, but I couldn't risk him finding the oil drum in the trunk. Plus, if word got around that Renji's car was spotted driving around Akiba, that would foil my plans. So... I came up with a lie. Yeah, so this is consistent with what we know, because there's a mysterious um message that we were investigating Iris for. We did actually bring Iris to the police station for this murder. I told him that I didn't have a license, so he had to keep it a secret. That's what that thing referred to in Ota's Nile messages, by the way. Yeah, I hate that. Only anime does that. <clears throat> That man, that person, that thing. Whenever they want to retain a mystery, they always just make people talk in really weird ways. And just like that, I managed to escape a bad situation and headed to Sunfish Pocket as planned. The rest went exactly as you already figured out. Day three. Sunday morning, I had a recording or some such thing scheduled. Oh, I am, of course, referring to Iris. I didn't want to draw suspicion, so I decided to attend as planned. I went to Lemniscate and performed my job. And when I left, I ran into you, Date. What I like from this, and I, I realize it's... Yes! Uh, uh, I'll, I'll finish my point and then I'll uh, refer to... What you're saying, Heisen. What I like about this is this is by the same person that made Zero Escape. And Zero Escape does have multiple timelines as well. And one of the clever twists that Zero Escape does, specifically the best one, the second one, is it says, ha, uh, the timelines don't have to be consistent because people make different decisions. So if you find out somebody's a murderer, the same events can seemingly play out and you can find out, oh no, that's a different person wearing the same disguise. Things like that. So the polar bear doesn't have to be the same person. And they're, they're doing the same thing. Like, Iris is evil in one timeline and not in the other. Uh, second thing. Um, yes, they do. Um, uh, playing a lot of old games, I get to see a lot of very, very bad um, voice acting. My favourite, of course, is I made a clip, I think it's available, called um, Yggdrasil. And it's from a game called Grandia. I played the first two hours. Uh, and it's the acting is awful. But he doesn't call it Yggdrasil. He calls it 
Your Drazel. Uh, uh, Yadrazil, I think he calls it or something. No, he calls it your Drazel. And I found that funny as fuck. I was quite tired at the time. Anyway, uh, yeah, acting across the board is just basically good in everything now. There will be, like, the occasional bad actors. You know, like, Game of Thrones is a pretty good example where it's um, Jon Snow and um, Khaleesi uh, are probably the worst actors. And they're not bad. They're just not as good. There's some, like, amazing acting in Game of Thrones. Uh, but, like... And, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm nearing my 40s. I'm used to, like, TV programming uh, having just kind of pretty bad acting, especially like, if you have children involved. That's still the case in certain places. But, like, across the board, in basically everything, actors are good. Direction, not not always. Even this. Uh, the acting's not bad, but I'm not... Uh, the direction of the, uh... I'm a serial killer, and I'm gonna talk a particular way. It's a little on the nose, if you ask me, but the acting's fine. The direction, I'm not sure. I, I think I would have played it a little bit more subtly than... Or a little bit more nuanced. You didn't have to, like... Be, like... Uh, you know, mastermind. It's... It, there's, there's, you could have made decision. Anyway. But the, the problem is, writing across the board hasn't improved. But we're trying to pump out content so fast now, so thick and thus, like everyone's, you know, gig economy. Actors are great, they, they, they learn their craft, um, and just, just, just writing has not caught up. And it's really frustrating, because uh, it's just like, your direction and your writing, it's just really bad, and your good actors can't make up for that. Uh, and it's, um, uh, what was I watching? Um, Blacklist. Uh, Blacklist has the uh, actor from Stargate in it, uh, and he's got like he's he's a really good actor, and he's got he's got like the coolest voice now. Like I don't know, he hit like his forties, and suddenly something happened to his throat, and it gave him cool cool voice itis. And so like uh, he uh, he's the voice of um, the robot in one of the Marvel films. Um, no, the other guy. Um, uh, Stargate the movie as well, not Michael Shanks. Stargate the movie, um, um, not the series. So it's slightly more expensive actors than uh, either of those two. Um, not Christopher Judge. <laughs> He's uh, this, the Stargate movie by the dude. What does Phil? Oh, what's his name? Okay, what's the Marvel robot dude? I'm gonna look it up because it's gonna annoy me. Marvel robot dude. Um. Not, not, who's the robot guy in Marvel? Ultron. Ultron voice. Ultron voice. Like, that's a pretty off, open and shut question. James Spader. Okay, you probably said that by now. Um, James, um, uh, Michael Shanks is playing James Spader. Uh, so yeah, James Spader now has like a weirdly cool voice. Uh, and like, I watched like, a series of the backlist just on the basis of him being a really good actor they just dangled a really good actor in a series and it's not very good it's like there's only so much you can dangle and i've actually seen lots of tv series is doing this uh especially murder mystery ones where they'll get one great actor uh, and just be like can, can we get away with like a subpar mystery if we just have like a one really good scene in an episode Oh, it's because I'm talking really loud, isn't it? Um, I'm going to move the microphone away. Hmm, that's interesting. Anyway, I'm going to continue pressing this. To be honest, I was a little surprised. Michael Sh uh, not Michael Shanks. Uh, what, oh, what? I forgot his name. J James Speeder talks like this now. I can't do it. Uh, it would kill my throat to even try. Just the previous night, I was a parasite in the body of Renju. Now, I, I need my yeti to I understand. I didn't think Ota had seen me. So, of course, I didn't expect to see you there so soon. You were on to me. But there was nothing I could do about that. If I ran, it would only increase your suspicion. 
So I decided to play my role. The interrogation began around 8.20 p.m., is that right? Then you sinked into my mind. Yeah, she has to be evil in all these timelines. Oh, that's why she's... Yeah. Okay. But you didn't get what you were looking for, did you? As a result, you had no choice but to release me. I didn't want to go home right away. I knew there might be police waiting for me. That would make it difficult to sneak out at night. And that would put my plan in jeopardy. So I asked you to take me to Marble. I tried to find an opportunity to run, but then another unexpected event occurred. I got a Nile message from Ota. I knew I could use him. So I told him I needed his help and to meet me at Marble. He did as I instructed him to do. After that, I got into the van with Ota. But because his presence was unnecessary, I asked him to stop at a convenience store to buy me something to drink. And Ota's mum was following for the entire of this. His mum, Ota's mum didn't like Ivis. When he was gone, I took his car and drove to my parents' house where I used to live. Yes, the Sejima residence. Of course, I knew I couldn't just walk up and ring the doorbell. Hello, Father, it's been a long time. Of course, Saito and Iris would be half, half, well, they'd be siblings. I was also in Iris's body at the time. But I thought I could use that to my advantage. So I pushed on the intercom and sure enough, my dad invited me inside. I told him this. I want you to come with me. There's something I need to show you. He was quiet for a while, but eventually agreed and got into the van with me. We arrived at the prototype sync machine around 11.50 p.m. By the time I was in the body of Sosajima, it was a new day. Camera! It's used for interrogation. Thank you. Continue. This was yesterday, early Monday morning, past midnight. In my new body, I drugged Iris, put her in the van, and drove to a new location. Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. I arrived around one, then prepared for the show for a couple hours. Yeah, if I went to my dad, I mean, it wasn't even a... And it's like, there's something I need to show you. What? No. There's something I want to show you. Yeah, just... <laughs> no. Oh, no! Uh, I, even better! So, uh, the first time I showed my brother this flat, um, you have to come in through the back door. Well, it's my front door, but it seems like a back door. So, there's a yard out there, and then you turn a corner, and you go down an alley, and you get to the front of the house. So, I met my brother near the train station, and, he, and I was like, oh, yeah, come! And what I did is I wanted to be like a like a rabbit, a magical rabbit, and I, I, I tried to do a thing where I I stepped behind the corridor so he could see me, and I was going to run to the end, run to the other side, so as soon as he got to the corridor, I would suddenly disappear again. And it would be a series of him, you know, like in a movie when you're chasing someone, and you just see them go left. But what happened is he accidentally went in somebody else's house, was confused briefly, and then had to phone me. So that was a terrible idea. Don't do that, that's reckless. Of course, when I say show, 
I mean, dismembering Iris. Yeah, why did you put that on camera? That was weird. Because of the temperature in the warehouse, it took longer than I expected to prepare, but... Well, you saw it in the video. Of course, I didn't anticipate Ota would show up. What does that make it? Three times that brat has showed up unexpectedly? That annoyed me to no end. And I took that out on him. Dressing him up in the polar bear was an impromptu plan on my part. I didn't mean to make you think he was the killer. I just wanted to throw a wrench into the investigation. Didn't matter if you found out or not. This all happened Monday morning. I left the warehouse around 3.30 a.m. There isn't much to talk about on Monday. Before noon, I used my old man's body to call this one. Boss. You might not know this, but she and my father go back about six years. The two shared a terrible secret. Hinting at that was enough to get the boss to come running to me immediately. Six years is probably why... Uh, six years is probably when my amnesia happened. Yeah, he lost his eye six years ago. I injected her with a sedative, then brought her body to the chemical plant. I synced with her, exchanged our bodies. And after blowing my father's brains out, I cut his body into pieces. Why? I stuffed the meat into a vase I'd brought earlier, then drove back to my house. Oh yes, of course we found that. So you just did that for the mystery sake. Okay, fair enough. Continue. So I spoke of grace with no sign of remorse. I was trying to keep my anger from boiling over and kept asking him questions. Why did you take out your victim's eyes? You know all about the prototype sink machine, don't you? That should explain it. Yes, of course. That has all, all, all the answers. What? I knew. Prototype sink machine differed from the one at Abyss in a few key ways. The Abyss machine... The machine at base was more sophisticated narrow cables than the sink gear entered through the gap between the eyeball and the socket. Then they then travel down the optic nerve canal to the brain. Oh, so you need to take someone's eye out to do that. Oh, and you know what? I should have known that because Iris was missing an eye and they should have described that, but I apparently completely missed that. That has implications though. No, Rohan just liked taking people's eyes because he was a weird pervert man. Before the sink. We need to remove the left eye. Manually. The subject and the sink have to remove their eye from the socket. Otherwise the cables cannot enter the... But, but boss has two eyes. I can see she's got two eyes right now. Cables cannot enter the brain. Of course, even with the eye removed, severing the connection to the brain isn't necessary. The extracted eyeball still has an optic nerve and the... Oh, so it's... So you can just pop it back in. After a sink, the eye is supposed to be replaced back in the socket. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be safe, side effects are rare. Yeah, fair enough. You can... It's happened to wrestlers before where their eyeball comes out. And you have to go... Off the bits and then pop it. It's cruciating. Um, unless the nerve of blood vessels is damaged somehow, the placing the eyeball isn't too difficult. Right, I'll be right back as well. Um... Sorry, I won't be like a... Well, I will be. I'll be like a minute or something. 